Helen. <laughs> well, just cut me right off. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, happy Monday evening. It's Monday evening for me. It's not for, I think it's Friday afternoon probably for you guys, but for me, it's Monday evening, which is why we've got this kind of harsh lighting happening. <laughs> Usually we try to film in the day with natural sunlight because it's just so much nicer, but you know, daylight savings time, sun's going down early, the days are busy, so here we are with our nice softbox lighting. Which is funny that they're called softbox because it's harsh from what I hear. <laughs> Looks good to me, but... <laughs> oh, says the one who just said it was looking too bright. Here we are. It's uh, time to chat. I have Sir Benix at my feet, as he always is. I don't tell him to do it. He just insists on being everywhere I am, which I think is absolutely damn adorable. Um, I feel like when guide dogs or service dogs come home, at least in my experience, they're like the utmost of clingy. Um, Cause they're just like, you're their comfort. You're all they know in this new environment. Like you're the one consistent thing that they have. And I feel like they're also just at their like peak bonding, you know, and um, you gotta soak it up. You've gotta enjoy it because it won't be like that forever or it might not be anyways, um, but it's so nice when it when it's like that. I just think it's so cute. So he's still in that phase where even if I just go pee without him and I close the door and he didn't get there on time, I just hear his head going boom, boom. I'm like, it's I'm gonna be out in two seconds, Ben. Um, so yeah, he's a gem, I love him, so cute. So I, I know. You guys are not going to want to miss the end of this video. So stay tuned to the end of this video because you are going to see so much puppy cuteness, all the fun tricks, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys in this video. But before that, I have been getting so many questions, mostly about my new guide dog. And so I thought today I'd just sit down and answer the questions you've got for us. And uh, why not spice it up and show you guys some fun Benny tricks. So. Let's get into question number one, which um, came from TikTok. I feel like not all of you follow me over on TikTok, which you should because it's a lot of fun. Um, and I post pretty much every single day. But I get a lot of really great questions over on TikTok, so I thought I'd just kind of answer some of them here as well. Well, a lot of people actually wanted to know that. They said, do the French commands help with people messing with them, or is it just how he was trained? Curious, not judgmental. Sadly, that needs to be stated. <laughs> Um, I don't think anybody's questions is judgmental unless they're like quite clearly judgmental. You guys know that I'm very not easily offended, but obviously most of you will know from watching the guide dog series that he's trained in French because he's from a French school. Other schools do train in English. I, I feel like there is a pro to being in an English speaking city with a French speaking dog. And that is that even when people try to command him, they can't because he doesn't know what they're saying. That said, on the opposite end of the spectrum, I think sometimes it's a negative, and sometimes I will actually command him in French and then repeat it in English so that the people around me know what I'm asking. For example, if I'm asking him on the subway, you guys saw that video recently where I took him on the train. When I go on the subway, I ask him sheds to find me a chair. Oftentimes, all the chairs are taken, so he can't take me to an empty seat. I need to sit down. PSA, if you ever see a disabled person, doesn't matter their age, even if they are young, if you see a disabled person with a service dog or mobility aid, please offer them your seat. We often need to sit. In my case, I have severe balance issues, um, and so I'm very likely to fall over even if I'm holding on to something. Um, and so sitting is absolutely very important for me. And also for Benix, if he is standing or just like in the kind of general area, usually the standing areas are in the doorways. And so people aren't paying attention and it becomes much easier for them to step on him, to push him, to knock him over. So for his safety as well, it's best that we're in a seat where he can tuck himself away so he's out of people's way as well. Look, I just spit. <laughs> Cute. Mm -hmm. um, my passion is coming out. And so what I will do is say like, Chez, chair, find a chair. And so like, it's very clear to people, I am looking for a chair. And that way somebody's more likely to be like, oh ma'am, there's a chair right over here um, and offer me their seat. And I'm not trying to take the seat of anybody who needs it. 
Obviously, if there's another disabled person or an elderly person or somebody who needs it for whatever reason, I'm not asking them to move, but if you are an able-bodied young person who does not need to sit and sitting is just a luxury or a nice thing to have, definitely consider being that kind soul and helping a disabled person out because it really does make a big difference for us. And yeah, so sometimes I will actually repeat the command in English so that people around me know what I am saying to him and also know that I do speak English. Because sometimes when I'm only speaking French to him and that's all people around me are hearing, they're afraid to offer me help or talk to me because they assume that I only speak French. So I think there's pros and cons to having a French only dog and I've kind of learned how to like navigate around the challenges by just using English as well. Not for his benefit, but for other people's. Hey Molly, in the past we've done the animal communicator videos with Gallup and Lavender. Would you consider doing one with, one with Felix? Um, I've actually had quite a few people ask me this one. Um, comment below, I'll do a pinned comment to ask you guys if you'd want to see it. I'm probably going to do it anyways, whether I film it or not, because I know a lot of people think it's a bunch of hooey, and maybe it is, but it's still fun. So I'm probably going to contact an animal communicator and yes, chat with Benny and maybe even chat with gallop to see what he thinks of everything and maybe lavender maybe i'll chat with all three who knows but i definitely think it would be fun to talk to bennix through an animal communicator so i'm probably going to do it regardless and let me know if you'd like me to film it what's the hardest part of getting a new service dog i just picked up my service dog it's been very hard she's amazing and continues to impress me but i feel like no one talks about the mental strain of a new service dog there is a lot of challenge to getting a new service dog and i i think i've, I've tried my best to be transparent about that it's emotionally draining. The stress, the anxiety, um, just the training in general, even harder than the training is the returning home from the training when you are no longer in the safety of the school environment, you no longer have the daily support of trainers, you're doing it all on your own, you're integrating them back into your normal life, whether that be work or school, just friends, family, relationships. Um, and it's constantly training them to those new environments. It's exhausting mentally, emotionally, physically. It is draining and you need to be kind to yourself. Oh, Molly is on the couch. What? He's never gone on the couch before. He's never gone on the couch before, <laughs> ever. He's in darkness so people can't really see him. I've never seen him on the couch. What? He's never gone on the couch. Where, where are you? <laughs> ben, get down. Mommy, come on, look, I'm, I'm so cute. Do you want to play with me? You, you want to play with me? <laughs> Take your damn ball. Oh, he's very funny. Have you settled back in? Yes. There we go. Are we on to a new question? Did you finish off the last one? Um, I think I was just saying to be kind to yourself. And um, I intentionally planned to put most of my time into Ben when I got home. I intentionally um, pre-filmed. I intentionally uh, actually dropped out of events that I was supposed to go to. Like I was supposed to go to Buffer Festival in London, England. And I actually dropped out because it was gonna be like just too tight. I was invited to go to Scotland. I didn't, which I would have loved to do. So I like cleared my schedule as much as possible. I'm losing hair. My God, this is a hot mess. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> Freaking typical. And so yeah, I would recommend trying to keep your life as calm and quiet and don't go full force when you get your new dog. Just like ease into it. This person says, please ignore, forgive, this crosses any boundaries, but you mentioned his poop bag, but how do you find it if he goes? <laughs> this is like the, the most requested question ever, I think. It's so funny. I did this video years ago about it, which I think is funny, but um, Literally, he just, he does the poop walk. I think any dog owner knows what the poop walk is. He does the poop walk, which is distinctly different than his pee walk. So I can feel in the leash that he's doing a poop walk. He then like hovers and then I quickly put the bag on my hand, feel the arch of his back. Um, I can also hear when he's peeing versus pooing because he's a Dog, uh, he's a male dog, so he's standing when he's peeing and lifts his leg. And so the pee has quite a ways to travel before it hits the concrete. So I can actually hear it, whereas when I had a female dog, it was a bit harder to hear because obviously they kind of crouch. Um, so I can usually hear when he's pooping versus peeing. I put the bag on, put it on the arch of his back, and then at the end, I boom, go right down, feel for the heat, done. It's honestly 
so easy. Like, it's really not very hard. Um, anything else to say about your bowel movements? Where's he going? Is he going to the couch? <gasps> He's on the couch! What? <laughs> it's so funny. So, it's just what people can see. <laughs> he looks so relaxed. What is this all about? What is this about? This is new, Mom. I know. This has never happened. And I know it's never happened because he's always with me. Man. Benjamin Button. <laughs> down. Down. What's happened? This ben. is the first time I've ever seen him be disobedient. I think he likes the attention. <laughs> Same old routine, bringing over the bone. There's got to be some method to this. Well, <laughs> I think maybe he wants attention. He definitely, absolutely, he just wants attention. That's all this is. He wants. Did he get his dinner? Yes, he got his dinner. <gasps> oh. But he didn't get played. Like, he didn't get to go to the park. Oh, yeah. Remember, we almost got to go to the park and then he didn't. And I think he's salty. A naughty boy, and you know it. Mm -hmm. um, I have been in contact. My patrons already know this over on my Patreon. But I have been in co contact via email with both his foster parents and his hospice family. Um, he worked at the hospice. Mom, where's he going? Where's he going? I'm paranoid. Uh, I think he's going back hey, to the couch. Hey, Ben. <laughs> ben. Um, but yeah, I've been in contact. So it turns out he worked at the hospice center for 11 months. And that is, in fact, where he learned to get on the bed. When I assumed in my a video, like, way back at the beginning of the series, when I assumed his foster family let him on the bed and that's how he learned to go on the bed, I hadn't learned that he had been at a hospice center yet. Um... And once I did, it immediately clicked. I was like, that's probably where, because it was really like a therapy dog type of setting. And a big part of being a therapy dog in hospitals is often climbing on the bed with children or just patients in general. And the hospice, the woman who, who I've been in connection with at the hospice center, like told me he used to cuddle on the couch with um, the children and cuddle in the beds. So I think he's used to since then, like being able to go on the couch. But he literally, until right now, he has never, never even tried to get on it. Never. So I feel like he's truly like acting out right now because I'm busy and I'm not giving him attention. Yeah. We're going to have a long talk about this later. <laughs> he's got his back turned to you, by the way. <laughs> if you have to use a bathroom during a flight, does he guide you to the bathroom and wait outside or does he try to come inside with you? So that is actually a really good question. Um, he does not guide me to the bathroom simply because the um, aisles on airplanes are too thin. So when we're walking, we're essentially side by side, which means we're double the width of like a normal person. And I think we all know like airplane seats and airplane bathrooms and airplane alleyways are like teeny, teeny, tiny. And so he does not. What I do is get set a guide from somebody that I'm with, like a family member or friend. Or if I'm traveling alone, I hit the button and the flight attendant comes and I grab the elbow. He's on the couch. What? <laughs> Pleased, I can tell. He's so pleased with it. See, this is the problem with bringing home a new guide dog. This is the stress that woman was talking about, that she was asking me about. This is it. You, they're like, you have to get to know their quirks and their personalities. They're imperfect. They make mistakes. But honestly, this is actually the boldest he's ever been since getting him home over a month ago. Like he has yeah. actually never been this bold before on or off harness. So I guess now I'm getting my come comeuppance. Come up <laughs> my comeuppance. Come up now I'm getting it. He's goosh. Goosh. Just stay right there. Rest, bug. Rest. I think he has a message for you. <laughs> for I sure. don't know what the heck it is. <laughs> but um I wanna get out. Yeah, this has been this is the naughtiest he's literally been since I got him home and I'm so happy and pleased he's doing it on camera. This is like when your child misbehaves, like they're always a gem, but then you go to grandma and grandpa's house and they throw a tantrum and you're like, I swear they're never like this. You are being a damn fool. I'm going to talk to your foster family about this and ask if you were ever this bold with them. <laughs> oh, sorry. I wasn't even done answering that oh, question. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, mom, he, he's really quiet. I don't know how he keeps doing this. It's He's just so quiet when he yeah, gets up and walks away. I'll, I'll keep an eye. Rest. Um, so no, I will get sighted guide and I will bring him on, like I'll hold the leash, walk him behind me, and the person is in front of me that I'm holding their arm. And then at the bathroom, I go in on my own, and then he lays down outside with whoever guided me to the bathroom. Do people with service dogs have to pay for an extra seat on the plane? This doesn't seem fair. There should be paperwork to 
compensated or something? Um, some airlines offer um, a blind person to get one free ticket for somebody traveling with them. Not all airlines, but some do. Um, and then in terms of service dogs, no, you do not have to pay for the extra seat, but you're not guaranteed the extra seat. They will give you an extra seat often when one is available, but as we know, most flights seem to always be full. So when it is a full flight, I do not get an empty seat next to me. What happens if he has to go to the bathroom if it's a five hour flight? Dogs, from what vets have always told me and from what I've definitely seen and experienced with my service dogs as somebody who has traveled very frequently with them, and done very long haul flights, like 12 to 14 hours. They don't, dogs don't experience the same sense of urgency to go to the bathroom that humans do, unless they're sick. Like if they have diarrhea or something like that, but, or like a bladder infection. But as long as they're healthy, they don't experience the same sense of urgency that humans do. And so they can hold it for much, much, much longer than we can without feeling like a lot of discomfort. Um, but what I do is I make sure that like the last thing we do before they get on the flight is pee, bring them to the doggy pee zone at most, like most big airports nowadays have them at least in North America. And then um, I limit their water intake and spread their water intake out. And I've never had a problem. Once Gallup had a diarrhea accident at the airport and once Gypsy had a diarrhea accident at the airport, both times it was cause they had a sick tummy, Gypsy's thrown up at the airport but neither of them ever got sick on a flight. Like neither of them ever threw up or had diarrhea on a flight. I did hear one blind girl say that her guide dog had diarrhea on a flight once. And what she did was she, with the air hostess, went to the back of the plane and the air hostess put a blanket down. Her dog pooped in the blanket and then they wrapped it up and threw it out, which I actually thought was really smart. So, if that if I ever get the sense that my guide dog needs to like have an accident or an emergency on a plane, I feel like I'm gonna suggest that to the air hostess because I thought that was really smart. Question, are you able to have other pets while owning a guide dog? You are able to have other pets when you have a guide dog. However, they discourage having other dogs. Not necessarily retired service dogs, but they discourage having like pet dogs. I did have a pet dog when we got Gypsy. Um, so they, it's not like they're not going to let you, but they don't, they prefer if you don't have a pet dog. The reason being is most family pet dogs aren't very well trained. Not all, but a lot aren't. Some, I mean, some people's pet dogs are like flawless service dog quality, but a lot of them aren't very well behaved. Years of training can unravel real quick when a very well trained dog is around a badly behaved dog. Uh, it's known that a badly behaved dog will never just like learn from a well-behaved dog, but a well-behaved dog will absolutely learn from a badly behaved dog. And my first guide dog, Gypsy, absolutely learned many bad habits from my family pet who was very ill-trained. And by ill-trained, I mean basically not trained. So I saw it with my own two eyes that don't work, so I didn't see it, but you know what I mean, it's figure of speech. So yeah, they, they don't like it, but they're also not gonna like not give you a guide dog because you have one. Okay, good news, now that I've told him to stay, he's actually staying. Probably should have thought to tell my dog to stay before, <laughs> but I've never had to, because he's always just sat beside me. Curious, is there an age or time limit that you can use a dog as a working dog? The general rule of thumb is that guide dogs work for six to eight years of service. Um, guiding is one of the most intensive forms of service for service animals. It's also the, the hardest program to train for. Um, I've heard that across the board from trainers, even from trainers who train at schools that have like six or seven different programs. They still say that guiding is the hardest to train for. Um, and I think it's for a number of reasons. I think you're, you have to train the dog to have spatial awareness. You have to train the dog to have a lot of leadership. Um, and you have to train do the dog to like ignore their basic dog instincts. Um, and in a way that not necessarily all other forms of service dogs have, like our life is very much in their paws constantly. Um, if they make one wrong decision, we can't see to correct that decision. And so we might potentially end up in a really bad situation. And so it's very tough to train them for. And because it's one of those jobs where they are constantly working, um, not in the house obviously, but when they are on harness and out, they're pretty much constantly working. Like a lot of other service animals, they do a task at a certain time. 
Um, so like they, they smell and then they alert to the medical problem, something like that. Or they pick up an object when they're commanded to pick up an object. Whereas a guide dog isn't like walking beside me um, and then doing a task. Him walking is performing his task. So every step he takes, he is working. And so I think that's why sometimes the work lifespan of a guide dog can be a bit shorter than the work lifespan of other forms of service animals um, because the work is quite intense. And so six to eight years is pretty standard for guide dogs. They can work more and they can retire earlier. That's just kind of the, the average. If you are a service dog handler, comment how long your service dogs have worked for. I think it's interesting. Also, service dogs all graduate at a different age. Like because of the pandemic, Bennix graduated, like he's gonna be two and a half on December 10th. So, or sorry, three and a half, three and a half on December 10th, which is much, much later than guide dogs typically graduate. And I did expect something like that to happen, getting a dog kind of just on the tail end of the pandemic. Um, so I wasn't surprised, but like things like that could impact how long he works or he might end up working longer than my other two. Um, my other two bo both worked for seven years. I think we should show you Ben's tricks because I think it's really fun. Also, um, I think it's really funny that I'm somebody who's like, ah, I don't like human names on, on dogs. And then I call him Benjamin and Ben and Benji and Benny all the time now. So hi, I'm a hypocrite and I own it. Okay, actually, I was going to show you all the tricks right now, but the lighting is so bad that I'm just going to do it tomorrow in the better daylight. So I will see you tomorrow, and you will see this fool tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not sure what my fool of a dog is doing. Okay, Ben, we're going to practice our tricks, okay? Now, some of these are really new. So, you know, we're still in training, but I thought I'd show you our progress. Two of these were taught to him. One was taught to him by his foster parents and one was taught to him by the hospice center. So not all of them are new, um, but then I've taught him a few. So this is one of his new ones. Sometimes he nails it, sometimes he does not. Mostly he does it perfectly. Um, I've, com I've taught him hug. So when we do hug, um, he's supposed to get his arms to my shoulders and then he usually kisses my cheek. So we'll see if he does it. Ben, hey, hug, hug. Ben, can I have a hug? Yay, oh shit, do you want a kiss? There, thank you. <laughs> okay, this is another one of the new ones that I've been teaching him, so it's not perfect yet. Circle, wee, circle, wee. <laughs> so when I say circle, I say it twice and he goes one direction the first time and then flips and does the other direction. And Ready, good? Circle, circle, bullshit. Next is roll, which was taught to him by his hospice center. Kush, kush, roll, bullshit. <laughs> this is another one that I've been working on with him. Paw, other paw. No, I see, other. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> As I said, we're still working. This one's a new one, so he didn't nail it that time. I see, Ben, Ben, I see. I see. One paw. Second paw. Oh, yeah, we got it that time. <laughs> and my personal favorite, you guys know he does like downward dog a lot and I've been wanting to teach him yoga. And his foster family actually reached out and told me, cause we've been in contact, love them, they're wonderful people. And they told me that they actually taught him that command as bow. <laughs> Ben's like, look at my toy. They taught him that command as bow. Um, and even more exciting than that, they taught him that if they do downward dog in front of him, he'll do it in front of them, like repeat it. And I immediately tried it when they told me that and he did it like that. Amazing, I'm so excited. Um, so don't judge my downward dog because I've realized in doing this a lot with him that my downward dog needs some serious work. He makes it look really bad. So, okay, Ben, Dabu. Toy away. <laughs> okay, take two. We hit the toy, so hopefully he'll do it and he's not grumpy about his toy. Ready, Ben? He just did. <laughs> ben. Ben. The struggle is cute. <laughs> he literally just did it. We practiced, and he just did it. Ben. There we go. Bullshit. <laughs> Third time's the charm.
as you can see, we still have a little work to do on some of the tricks, but I think it's really fun. I mean, he's a guide dog, you know, like they don't train them to do fun party tricks. And it's something I haven't done with my other guide dogs, but he knew, he already knew the two. And then he really loves to learn and he's very food motivated and um, he really likes being challenged. So I just kind of thought, I think this dog would enjoy learning a few new skills and like practicing his other ones. So we have, we have fun with it. It's nothing serious. Like I'm not trying to make them perfect. I'm just having fun with him. And I think it's cute to watch him do little circles and do a little downward dog together. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of fun. Comment to let me know if there, you think there's a trick that I should try to teach him next. And thanks for watching this video. Until next time, you can click over here to see my condo demolition video, some blind girl construction work, or you can click over here to see this other recent video I posted. See you next time. Bye.